because it contains six complexy groups, so known as hexadentate ligand. So, but its neutral form, I told you, it is H4Y. It is a tetraprotic assay, and uh, it has four ionizable protons. So, basically, Y4 minus. I'll write it down. So, usually, when I write with uh, this electronic pen, the handwriting is uh, not very good because we are not. Uh, I mean not well practiced for write, uh, writing in this way. So you have Y4 minus. This is the actual form. This is unprotonated ligand. This forms complex with the metal ions. That means the protons are displaced by the metal ion upon complexation. So I'll show you. Um, full screen so usually this takes longer time when i write something but it is like similar to what i am writing on the board so you have edta all of you all of you can see clearly what i am writing yes ma'am okay so we can uh, represent edta as having uh, four ka values in fact we can have six ka values but we usually take the neutral form that is H4Y. So we represent EDTA having four Ka values corresponding to the stepwise dissociation constant of four protons. So we can represent You know what Ka is the dissociation constant of acid. Four Ka values corresponding to stepwise dissociation. Of four protons. So let us slide down the equilibrium steps. So you have a neutral form of this uh, ADTA. So if you represent this by H4Y, and if it loses one proton, this becomes H3Y minus. And the Ka1 corresponding to this is now if you take this uh, species, H3Y minus, if this again loses one proton, this becomes H2Y2 negative. And Ka2 is equal to 2.2 to 10 to the power of minus 3. Again, I take this species H2Y2 negative. This is an equilibrium with, if again it loses one proton, this becomes H Y three negative and K A three is equal to six point nine into ten to the power of minus seven. And the last one, H Y three negative. If this loses the last proton, this becomes Y four negative. So this is the actual species which is going to uh, interact with the metal ion to form metal ion complex. K A four is. 5.5 into 10 to the power of, since this is a constant it does not have any units so you can see there are four equilibrium steps uh, which shows different dissociation constant values and you can see it is 10 to the power of minus 2 this is 10 times lower and this is basically much more lower and 10 to the power of minus so you can see a significant difference between these uh, excuse me So you can see the difference, uh, I mean, significant difference between these values. I told you in the very beginning, if we replace uh, this EDTA with ammonia, ammonia is very uh, simple complexing agent. It has just one lone pair of electron, but you're not able to actually uh, 
determine the stepwise dissociation constant uh, because the they are very close to each other and it is very difficult to understand the titrations which are based on ammonia and metal ion so usually we replace uh, monodentate ligands with multidentate ligands uh, this will help to have better uh, discrimination between your dissociation constant stepwise dissociation constant as well as you have more stable complex right so actually uh, you can see all four carbonyl groups plus two nitrogens on edta molecule can protonate and in reality actually there are six dissociation steps uh, that means it has six ka values if you start with h4 uh, sorry h6 y2 plus if you start with h6 y2 plus and it loses one proton and then you have h5 and y plus so uh, basically the ka value is for this is 1 and if you have h5 y plus you can write down this equation uh, reaction and ka for this is 0.032 and corresponding to that we have here pk1 values so you can calculate from this also so the two nitrogens are more basic as i told you than the carbonyl atoms uh, oxygens and so protonate more easily the nitrogen protonation however does not affect the solubility of edta in acid so i'm going to draw a figure that will tell you the fraction of a particular edta Uh, I mean, EDT exists in different forms inside solution. So I'm going to make a plot how it is going to uh, this uh, species remain in solution with pH. How does it affect with pH? So just a moment. May not be the drawing may not be very good. So you have. here you have alpha this is fraction of edta and here is the ph so it's not exact uh, like scale uh, to scale this is a very rough diagram i know it's not good uh, all right so this is h4y this stands for h4y this is for h3y negative this is h2y2 negative hy3 negative and this is y4 negative so what you can see that uh, let me put the ph values this starts from 0 and scale is up to 14 this is like 12 and uh, here you have 8 or 2 10 and the alpha value starts from 0 it's up to 1 so these are the different fractions of edta so you can see how these species vary with the ph of the solution 
So after pH 10 or yes, after pH 10, this species predominate. So if you remember, uh, we have done EDTA titrations, we have maintained the pH of the solution equal to approximately 10.5 by adding uh, ammonia buffer, if you remember. So why did we, uh, we have done this? Because first of all, we need to maintain the pH because we want a specific species of EDTA that can react with the metal ion. So Y4 negative is the actual species which is going to react with your metal. So this species predominates when pH is more than 10. Basically, pH is uh, greater than 10.25. Then Y4 minus species predominate. So this figure shows the fraction of EDTA of each form as a function of pH. And Y4 is the ligand species, so the complexation equilibria are highly affected by the pH. So if you look at H4Y, H4Y, yes, yes, has, yes, you can say. Fraction is percentage. What do you mean by fraction? Yes, in any solution. Suppose you have uh, dissolved EDTA, right? If you have dissolved EDTA in water or whatever solvent you want, and you're looking at the what fraction of this EDTA, suppose if fraction is one, that means 100% that species is present. That means how much contribution of each species is there in a particular solution at a particular pH. That's all, nothing more than that. Is it clear to you? Okay. So if you take H4Y, the solubility is very low. In water. So basically, uh, we take Na2H2Y to H2O. So this is basically a disodium salt is used in which two acid groups are neutralized. So I'm not going to talk much more about this. It is not at all needed. This is just for the information that fraction of the EDTA, I mean, by four minus it exists uh, predominantly at higher pH, more than 10 pH. So there is another diagram, which is uh, here uh, before that. So this is another diagram. This is uh, with respect to logarithmic scale. Uh, the plot is a little bit uh, different from the previous one because we have taken logarithmic scale. So here you can see I have uh, included all this. Uh, how many species you have here? Four, uh, seven species starting from H6Y2 plus. And here is Y4 minus. So the maximum concentration of this Y4 minus occurs after pH 10. So based on that, if you would like to uh, calculate. So here you see, uh, you can see most of the EDTA is not Y4 negative. If I say you have all Y4 negative, it is not the case because you have some other species, for example, HY3 negative. This is also there. H2Y2 negative. Uh, there it is. So you have some other species at different pH, lower than 10 pH. It is not the only species. So if you want to calculate alpha 4 negative, what is the fraction of this species in EDTA solution, you can directly put the formula. It is here, fraction of EDTA in the form of Y4 negative. So alpha Y4, alpha is a fraction of particular species. So you take the concentration of this particular uh, species divided by the total concentration of all the species. What does that mean? Total concentration is nothing but the free DTA species in solution which has not been ionized. That means it includes all forms of species that is EDTA concentration so based on that there is one simple numerical if you can do it quickly right now uh, I mean it is not going to take too much time so here is the problem uh, I mean 
uh, I, have the, I have written the answer so i mean that's not the good thing anyways you try it so the question is the fraction of all yes uh, please show the previous slide such that i will write the what मैम थोड़ा बेट कीजिए मैम ये फार्मूला को लिख लेता हूं ताकि आगे बना सकूं सी सी लिसन आई एम गोइंग टू शेयर दिस स्लाइड्स विद यू डोंट वरी अबाउट दैट इजंट इट ओके मैम नो प्रॉब्लम ओके सो मे बी नॉट एट दिस टाइम आई मीन इफ यू वांट यू कैन नोट इट डाउन श्योर यू कैन नोट दिस डाउन बिकॉज़ यू हैव टू राइट नाउ सॉल्व दिस प्रॉब्लम सो फॉर फॉर दिस पर्पस यू कैन सेव दिस फार्मूला and if i am fast please let me know i'll stop theek hai done ma'am okay that's great so the question is the fraction of all free edta in the form of y4 negative is called alpha y4 negative this you all know at ph6 now suppose we are fixing the ph at 6 at a formal concentration so this is the edta formal concentration the composition of edta solution is what so you have to find out the composition of edta solution so i think you can do it you have all the values of these uh, yes, species so it depends upon your mathematics how you are going to solve this it is not going to take too much time so by mistake i have written the answer because i have taught the same in the section b also so anyways you can try this and uh, you have the value of y4 negative here the concentration of the species and you have the concentration of all other species so you have to add them up and try to find out the value of alpha 4 negative and what you see is that if you keep on increasing the ph of the solution right these values differ and you have different alpha y4 negative suppose if you take the concentration uh, of edta at ph 11 so in that case you have different alpha value even more more than that because the fraction of edta of y4 negative species is more after ph 10 as you have seen in the graph so this is very simple question you can take the screenshot uh, or if you want you can solve it right now वो कर सकते हैं इसी का आया आंसर यस दैट इज नियरली इक्वल टू द टू पॉइंट थ्री इंटू ट्वेंटी माइनस फोर रॉन्ग माइनस फोर चेक अगेन ओके वेरी गुड दैट दैट वाज अप्रोक्सिमेटली मैम yes okay so that's great so i expect all of you uh, are also working on it and would be able to get this answer very soon and if not i can move to the next slide and you can try it at home this is not i mean not at all complicated so uh, next is we are going to talk about the formation constant formation constant is also known as stability constant it is uh, denoted by kf you cannot see f here so i have to so these are the things uh and so formation constant is represented by kf kf is also known as stability constant so this is going to tell you whether your complex is stable or not suppose we are going to replace uh, ammonia ligand with ethylene diamine ligand so the formation constant for ammonia and if you compare the formation constant of ethylene diamine right so you are going to take for example four molecules of ammonia and two molecules of ethylene diamine the formation constant will be always higher in case of bidentate ligand and in this case it will be lower this indicates that your complex with bidentate ligand is more stable in comparison to monodentate ligand so however 
uh, I mean, whatever the ligand is, if you have KF higher, that means your complex is more stable. So this is the equilibrium constant for the reaction of a metal with a ligand. So here is your metal ion Mn plus, and I told you your ligand is in Y4 negative form, which is going to react with your metal ion to form a metal ligand complex. So here is your com complex. And if you write the formation constant, this is nothing but the ratio of concentration of product, which is MYN minus four divided by the individual concentration products of reactant species, MN plus into Y4 negative. Is it clear to everyone? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma we talked about, very good, we talked about formation constant, which is also known as stability constant. So I have taken the example of just one metal ion and one ligand, and uh, KF is going to dictate the stability of the complex molecule. So it is very important to note that uh, the formation constant for EGTA is defined uh, in terms of Y4 negative, right? Reacting with the metal ion, but the KF could have also been defined for any other, other form, six forms of EGTA in the solution. I mean, you can define for any other form also. But since uh, we, we mostly work with this type of ligand, and we fix the pH uh, above 10. So basically, we deal with this KF values. So here is a table. This table uh, shows, uh, this is just for your uh, knowledge, and you don't have to remember this table anymore. So this table shows the formation constants for metal EDTA complexes. And the values in the table apply, all the values are at 20 degrees centigrade in white. And in yellow, they are 25 degrees centigrade. So this is, these are literature values. You don't have to uh, think too much about this. So this formation constant, as you can see in the plot, for most GTTA complexes are quite large and observed to be larger for more positively charged ions. So if you have more positively charged ions, uh, in general, you have larger formation constant. So basically, we are going to uh deal with not deal with i mean we have uh, so you have magnesium uh calcium because you do titrations magnesium edta complex calcium edta complex for water hardness also so you can see the formation constant in logarithmic scale it is 8.79 so this is going to form more stable if uh, edta is going to make complex so it is going to more stable form. So with the help of KF, you can easily find out which complex is more stable. So next is, uh, we talked about simple formation constants. Next comes the conditional formation constant. So what is the difference between formation constant and conditional formation constant? Thing is that uh, you have seen in the figure that most of the EDTA is not Y4 negative below 10.4 pH, 10.2 pH. Other species also predominate at lower temperatures. So it is very important to fix the pH of the solution. So if we fix the pH of the solution, we find another formation constant, which is known as conditional formation constant. That is the only difference. That means we are fixing the pH by adding a buffer to the solution, which allows you to calculate conditional formation constant. That means you have some another constant that has been introduced in that particular equation in which you have fixed the pH. So for example, we are going to take the same reaction. You have metal ion and ligand. These are going to make a complex, metal ligand complex, and the formation constant is the same uh, I have shown you in the previous slide. So let us rearrange this equation, keeping alpha, uh, so first, uh, this is the fractional contribution of Y4 negative species. This is also from the previous slide. So we have two different equations. So now we are going to uh, rearrange this equation. So this is going to become alpha, uh, so Y4 negative. So you keep this here, and this alpha will be multiplied by EGT. So now what you do, you substitute this Y4 negative, all this old value to this uh, equation. 
So you have m y n uh, n minus four divided by m n plus here divided by y four negative. Instead of y four negative, I have replaced this with alpha into e d t k. So I hope I'm not going very fast. Please stop me if you think I am going fast. Is it okay? The speed is okay. Yes. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Okay, that's good. So I feel happy when all of you are interacting. So if I uh, hear some voices, I feel very ha happy that that you are listening carefully. So if you have fixed pH buffer, that's what I told you. So because since you have different kinds of species of EDTA in the solution, you need to maintain the pH of the solution. So this you can achieve by adding a buffer to the solution. Now you have a buffer. If you have a buffer, this alpha is going to be constant because if you fix the pH, you know which what is the fraction of this species. So basically, this alpha is going to be constant, right? Now you take this alpha to another side and multiply with this Kf. Uh, you take alpha here now, alpha four negative into Kf, and here you're left with m y n four minus by n n plus by edta so you move this term to other side left hand side and this is kf dash so kf dash since this is a constant this is a constant so you get a conditional formation constant in which you have fixed the pH. that is the only difference so whenever we talk about formation constant of the complex it is always better to talk about conditional formation constant and not just the formation constant because in that case, you have fixed the pH of the solution. So I think somebody's mic is on. Please uh, turn off your mics. I don't know who was that. Uh, so up to this point, I think uh, you are clear. So we learn about conditional formation constant. Last step, nahi samajh aaya? See, you have, uh, I'll do it here. That's why board is always preferred. So you have uh, this equation. I'll explain again. You have metal and ligand. So they are going to make a complex M, Y, N minus 4, right? So based on that, the formation constant is m y n minus 4 divided by m n plus into y4 negative. So here, if you look at this equation, this is the fractional contribution of y4 species, y4 negative species in the solution, which is y4 negative by EGTA, the total concentration. Okay, just a mole fraction nikalte, similar way. So here I have rearranged this equation. Now you have the value of y4 negative. So I'm going to substitute over here. So you have you have m y n minus 4 divided by m n plus into you have alpha into e d t a alpha y4 negative multiplied by concentration of e d t a. So what I am going to do since this this is a constant value. And this is, since we are going to keep the pH of the solution constant by adding a buffer, we know this value. Agar pH fix karenge, to alpha value pata chal jayegi. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to move this to here. So Kf multiplied by alpha y4 negative. This whole term, let this be Kf dash. And this is now equal to m y n minus 4 divided by m n plus into edta so this term kf dash which is a product of simple formation constant multiplied by the fraction of y4 negative species is known as conditional formation constant this is also known as effective formation constant abhi samajh aaya all of you are clear yes Yes, ma'am. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Okay, that's great. So, uh, 
I'm not going to give you this numerical. It is not at all needed. So next topic, uh, we are going to talk about the auxiliary complexing agents. So how much time do we have? Do you have your next class also? Next class, heck? Okay. All right. So next, we are going to talk about auxiliary complexing agents. Although I I have everything written on the slide. What do you mean by auxiliary? Who will tell you? What do you mean by auxiliary? Have you heard the word? Helping. Yes. It is a sort of anything which is going to help in something. It's a kind of helper. Okay? Which will help in any reaction. Mein help kare. So we are to going to talk about auxiliary complexing agents. Why we add auxiliary complexing agents to a particular solution for a particular titration. So we will see that. So basically these agents are used to allow several metal ions to be titrated in alkaline solution with EDT. Now suppose you are going to perform your uh, titration in alkaline solution. So there might be several issues. So EDTA titrations in basic solution. So when you do perform this, you have several issues. For example, I mean the major issue is that you have metal hydroxide formation. If you have basic solution, your metal is going to form hydroxide and this hydroxide is going to precipitate out. So once you have metal in the form of precipitate, are you able to do the titration further? Is it possible? No. So in that case, you need some helping agent or auxiliary complexing agent that will allow your metal ion to be there in solution form. It will prevent its hydroxide formation. That is the only meaning of auxiliary agent because this agent binds to the metal ion strongly. So what will happen? Whatever is the auxiliary, uh, auxiliary complexing agent, in this case, for example, ammonia buffer. So what buffer is a sort of auxiliary agent because it fixes the pH of the solution. So it has dual role. You can see one thing it is going to fix the pH of the solution. Other it is going to make a bond with the metal ion. So once it is going to make a bond with metal ion, it will prevent the hydroxide from precipitating. But you should remember that the formation constant Again, I repeat the formation constant of metal. So you have two things. You have metal, right? And here you have auxiliary agent. For example, ammonia is here. And here you have EGTA. So you know that this metal is going to make bond with both of them. Initially, when you are going to titrate your uh, metal ion with a uh, Initially, you have not added this EDTA, right? And you have made your solution alkaline. So at that moment, metal can form hydroxide and it can precipitate out. But if you have already added this ammonia, this ammonia is going to make metal ammonia complex, whatever be the valency. So you have metal ammonia complex. And then when you add EDTA, this EDTA should kick off this ammonia from here and it will form metal EDTA complex. And this is only possible when the formation constant of metal EDTA is higher in comparison to metal ammonia complex. Did you get my point? Did step get my point? Okay, I will explain again. So first you should understand what is auxiliary. Auxiliary means anything which can help you in a particular reaction to be carried out. So now, in this case, suppose we are adding buffer. Buffer in the form of ammonia that could help in fixing the pH of the solution. That is its one first uh, work. The second work is that it should be able to make a bond with your metal ion. So suppose you have a metal ion here. So I can take uh, another slide to explain you. Since you are studying all these things first time, so uh, all right. So I'll explain you clearly here. 
you have metal right so you are going to uh, do the titration with edta but first you are going to fix the ph of the solution so for that you are adding ammonia buffer and this is the auxiliary agent so when you have uh, in the very beginning you have metal plus ammonia complex formation this metal is able to make uh, make a bond with ammonia and hence prevents hydroxide formation ye samajh aaya agar metal akele hoga there is nothing inside and if you have alkaline solution you have metal hydroxide and in, since you have metal or hydroxide it will precipitate out and you won't be able to uh, carry out the titration procedure so for that purpose to prevent hydroxide formation or to prevent this metal from precipitating out we add this auxiliary agent now you have metal ammonia complex that is the first step you have metal ammonia complex formation i am not writing the valency this is just for your understanding next what you did you added edta now you started adding doing titration so this is the first step and this is the second step now what happens your metal is already safe with ammonia but the second complex that is formed is metal edta complex so there are two types of complexes i told you now the formation constant our conditional formation constant you can say for this is low and for this it is high did you get my point yes ma'am so m edta will be more so better stable this is more strong right so any complex which is going to be more strong is going to kick off this ammonia jo metal mein jitne bhi ammonia attached it is going to displace this ammonia and it is going to take अमोनिया प्लेस अब मेटल ईडीटीए के साथ बॉन्ड कर जाएगा और अमोनिया का पर्पज भी सॉल्व हो गया दैट मीन्स इट हैज मेंटेन द पी एच एज वेल एज इट हैज प्रोटेक्टेड दिस मेटल आयन फ्रॉम प्रिसिपिटेटिंग आउट सो दिस इज पॉसिबल ओनली वेन द फॉर्मेशन कॉन्स्टेंट ऑफ अ मेटल ईडीटीए इज हायर कंपेरिजन टू मेटल अमोनिया और मेटल ऑक्सिलरी एजेंट अभी समझ आया सबको Yes, yes, ma'am. Okay, so this is what I have written. I'll read it. Then now you'll understand very quickly. These agents are used to allow several metal ions to be titrated in alkaline solution with EDTA. You can titrate in alkaline solution. This agent binds to the metal ion strongly enough to prevent the. I mean, they also bind strongly these auxiliary agent to prevent the hydroxide from precipitating but weakly enough but it is not that strong i told you but weakly enough to give up the metal ion when edta is added that means ammonia will go away because edta is going to sit on that place this is what i have written so for example zinc reacts with ammonia buffer and you fix the ph complex with zn2 plus and keeps it in solution samajh mein aaya what is the role of auxiliary complexing agent now yes ma'am yes ma'am right so uh, next topic i am not going to start right now because uh, it will be i mean interrupted in between so you just see there are different methods of end point detection how you are going to determine uh, suppose you have an titration how you going to determine the end point there are different methods metal ion detectors mercury electrodes ion selective electrodes ph electrode you can uh, use for uh, end point detection so in your syllabus we are going to talk specifically about this metal ion detectors or metal ion indicators these are also known as complexometric indicators or metallochromic indicators these are colored indicators for example ebt ye padha hai idiochrome black t it is an indicator yes ma'am yes ma'am yaad aaya na sabko so yeah, yeah. we are going to talk about this metal ion indicators in detail in the next class and some of the uh, specific applications of edta or some uh, edta te te techniques 
these are very important for example what is back titration what is direct titration what is masking agent so we are going to talk all this about so i hope i would be able to finish the cdta in the next class so do you have any more questions so i'm going to uh, finish today's class sabko samajh aa gayi class yes ma'am any doubt ma'am ma'am ma ma during the titration we are can we use means ph always greater than 10 can acidic I mean, ph or slightly less alkaline ph can be also used i mean yes you can definitely use but it depends upon your system what kind of uh, uh, system is your i mean what which metal and what are the conditions it depends right so you can fix the ph to lower ph also so you don't have to add buffer but in that case also you have to use different buffer so depending upon the type of buffer it will fix your ph because which species you want predominantly so it it all depends upon you but more but most frequently we use this ammonia buffer because the reactive species is y4 negative that is the ligand which is going to actually react with your metal ion ठीक है Yes, ma'am. Okay, ma'am. Okay, auxiliary uh, complexing agent is clear. Conditional yes. formation constant. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Okay, so maybe in the next class I might ask you any one you any one of you uh, about this, so that uh, I know you all are sitting uh, and really doing online classes, right? so there are right now around 61 students out of 90 students the strength is not very good so kartike you started presenting what would you like to present nothing ma'am that's only due so whenever uh, somebody is presenting the previous presenter goes away anyways so thank you all of you see you all in the next ma'am yes ma'am can you explain the conditional uh formation constant again conditional formation constant all right so let me uh explain this first uh so first you should know what is a formation constant formation constant is also known as stability constant so i told you if you have a metal and a ligand they are going to form a complex and based on this equilibria you can write the kf value which is nothing but the ratio of concentration of products by reactants this we have done so when we come to conditional formation constant we fix the ph of the solution by adding a buffer so once we fix the ph of the solution so here i have written so once i fix the <coughs> ph of the solution that means you know the value of alpha alpha is the fraction of a particular species in the solution so this also becomes constant so what i have done i have taken this metal ion and a ligand again this is metal ion ligand complex formation and kf is the same what i have written before and uh, if you rearrange this equation your y4 negative species this is the product of alpha into edta so i have just substituted this here and moved this alpha value to the side and this kf is a constant when this is multiplied by another constant alpha this becomes kf dash this is known as conditional formation constant or effective formation constant so that's all the formation constant is is different from conditional in the sense that we have fixed the ph of the solution by adding a buffer so is it clear now so if yes. i share if i share these slides with you then uh, i think you can understand very well yes bajro yes ma'am it's clear ma'am the only difference is the addition of buffer yes that's that's that is the condition you have fixed the ph theek hai yes ma'am okay thank you all thank you ma'am